before I get on out of here, I got to get to the calls, okay? Got to get to the calls before I get on out of here because this is very, very important. As I promised y'all, I would take calls before I got on out of here. So let's get right to it. Let's go to Caesar in Houston, Texas. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Caesar? How you doing, Stephen A? Honor to talk to you, man. I used to try to get to your show. Your radio show can never get in. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, short and sweet. If you would have had a post-college career, if you didn't get injured, who would you have wanted to play with the most? Who would I have wanted to play with the most as my teammate? Yes, I would tell, I, believe it or not, I would tell you, I would tell you Steph Curry. I think playing with somebody like Steph Curry with his shooting ability, his shooting prowess, his movement without the basketball, it would have freed things up for me. LeBron James is another matter, but here's the problem with LeBron. LeBron is a basketball savant. He's best with the ball in his hands. He's an incredible decision maker. But he manipulates the game in such a fashion that the ball spends a majority of the chunk of the time in his hands. And so as a result, right. you're so dependent on him, that doesn't benefit me. But with a guy like Steph Curry, he's either going to shoot it or he's going to create the space to create opportunities for others to shoot, which means I would have a chance to flourish better. And that's why I say Steph Curry. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. Alejandro, Alejandro, you're live with Stephen. Yes. What's going on, man? How you doing? You're good, man. How about you? I'm good. Talk to me. So, big Spurs fan here. I'm just wondering what you think San Antonio should do in their current situation, given that Mbanyama has been kind of having a little bit of off game, but given time, he's going to be good. But what should San Antonio do right now? Continue to build. They're in the youth movement. Nobody's expecting anything from the San Antonio Spurs. Victor Wembanyama is going to be a star in this league for years to come. He's got skills. At 7 feet 4, his shooting ability, his ball handling skills, etc. He's got it. Now, they got embarrassed last night by Oklahoma City with Chet Holmgren and those boys. They came ready to play, no doubt about that. But this kid, Shea Gilgis Alexander, is a star in this league, and that's the reason why they were head and shoulders against the San Antonio Spurs. San Antonio's got some young talent with Vassal and all of those guys, but at the end of the day, Victor Wembanyama is a rookie. He's frail, thin, and he's a rookie. So as the season progresses, they're going to figure him out a little bit more. They're going to get a bit physical with him, and there are going to be some rough nights along the way, just like the Knicks put him through when he showed up at Madison Square Garden because you're going against elite de an elite defensive-minded coach, yep. Tom Thibodeau. Those are the kind of things that happen, but ultimately he'll be fine. Just stick with your youth movement, accumulate as much young talent as you possibly can, and grow together, and then when you have enough young talent, be ready to ship one or two of those dudes off to get a couple of veterans in there to really, really show you how to improve upon your skills and be better. But everything's going to involve around Wimpanyana anyway, no matter which way you slice it. Appreciate the call, man. For Thank sure, you man. so much. Keyshawn, Thank you. Keyshawn in Baltimore. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Keyshawn? How are you? Thank you for taking my call. How you doing? I'm all right. Go ahead. Talk to me. We have the best team in the AFC, arguably. The Ravens going up against the Bengals. Just want to get your score prediction. Um, I don't really have a score prediction for Thursday night's fo uh, football game between the Ravens and the Bengals, but I I'll make one. I'll tell you that if I had to venture to guess, I'm going to pick the Ravens to win this game 31-27. 31-27. Appreciate the call, man. Uh, let's go to, what is this? Truy Lopez in Texas. You're live with Stephen A. Truy, are you there? Hi, Stephen A. This is Trey. Trey, Trey, my bad. It said this is about Truy. I apologize. Trey, what's going on? Um, I'm here to ask for advice because I want to start a podcast, a sports podcast. Okay. Next, uh, in 2024. What's your advice on starting one? You said my advice on what? Because I don't quite hear you. What, my advice on what? Uh, starting a sports podcast. On starting a sports podcast? Yes. Okay. Well, what do you want to know? I mean, listen, you got to know sports, first of all. You got to be willing to do your research. Um, yeah. You got you to you you watch the games. Uh, you've got you've got to know what people are talking about. You got to pay attention to the kind of news uh, items that are percolating in the minds of the American public. That's what you got to do. And a lot of times people are just talking. Don't be just a talker. Be somebody who actually w went out there and does it. I mean, you got a lot of people right, that have sure. podcasts and they're doing a lot of different things and their level of expertise is to be respected and appreciated. And I'm certainly not trying to go there, but I don't look at me as being in the same breath as them because I think about all the things that I've done in my career and the level of credibility that I have because of it. So, you know, to me, it's far more expansive than that. And I've got a greater responsibility than a typical person just getting in front of a microphone and camera and talking because there's too much that I know and there's too many people that I know. And so there's a level of perspective of intel that I have to bring to the equation that far extends beyond numbers and data. 
You got to do more than that. And you got to be committed to doing more than that. And you ain't going to do that if you're just sitting at home and talking. Okay, cool. Oh, will you will you come uh, will you come see it? Will I come see what? If I start a podcast, will you, it, it will you, will you join if me I, sometime? I, I maybe, maybe not. I don't know you, so I'm not gonna say okay. yes. I'm gonna join your podcast. Hell, I just spoke to you for the first time. You think you're speaking to me, and all of a sudden you're gonna get me to come on your podcast? No, my brother, it's harder than that. You got to earn that, brother. Yeah. Just like I had okay, to. Okay, cool. Just Thank like everybody else had to earn it. All right. Get to work. Yes, sir. Thank Do you, man. You're the go. Later. John, last call. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, John? Talk to me. Hello, sir. I do have a question and a, and a small request. Okay. Uh, the, the AP is now reporting that Connor Scallion uh, did not, he did not report any expenses to the University of Michigan, meaning, in fact, he may have acted alone. Could the Big Ten may have jumped too soon to suspend Jim Harbaugh? And my request, uh, well, when no, you no, do no, get no, your stop right, there, stop right there, stop right there. Let me answer your question yes, first before you put in your request. Yes, yes sir. I don't want Absolutely. to hear some report about the AP is saying that Connor Stallion may not have given any intel to, to Jim Harbaugh. I don't want to hear that. That's, that's bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, you had ample time to come out with that nugget of information before the Big Ten handed down its suspension. You did not do that. Number two, we know what the story has been, and we've seen them on video infiltrating other people's sidelines. Number three, do you really think an employee for the football program did all of that for his health and didn't give any intel back to the football coach of Michigan? That is utterly ridiculous. I mean, why don't you spit in my face and tell me it's raining? That's just the stupidest thing that I've ever heard. There's no way in hell that he did it for nothing. Now, he may have done it on his own, and as a result, on doing it on his own, then coming back to Jim Harbaugh and feeding the program the information, that would have been another thing entirely. But don't tell me he just did, he just did it and he kept the information to himself. That's just a dumb, dumb conclusion to reach. Now, what is your request? Well, my, well I'm a big fan. So my one request is when you do get your uh, nighttime L.A. TV show here, I'd like to be a permanent guest there so I can witness you live a second part of the dream that, you know, you've always thought of. Well, I appreciate that, but I'm not interested in people being permanent guests. If I had you as a permanent guest, what about the millions of people who'd want to be guests themselves? Then I got to shortchange them for you? That's not going to happen. If I ultimately had a late night show, and I'm not saying I'm going to do a late night show, it could be an afternoon show, it could be late night. I consider myself a hybrid individual with that level of, of versatility. Whatever it calls for to me to do, for me to do in front of the camera, I believe I'm capable of doing. It could be late night, it could be an afternoon talk show, it could be a variety of other things that I'm aiming to do, but I'm going to always be me. At the end of the day, what I would say to you, however, is that you are more than welcome. If I ever have a show with a live studio audience, you're more than welcome to be in the audience. But to say a permanent member of the audience. Oh, I'm, that's, Stephen that's, A., I apologize. That, that, I meant, I meant in the audience. I yeah, meant in the audience. You could come in the audience occasionally. Yes. Yeah, that's, you know, what, you, I, that's you know, what I meant. You know, no permanent I mean, seat in your name, but you're more than welcome to come. There's no doubt about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, All right. no, no doubt, man. I, I appreciate you living that dream, man. Thank you so much. No I appreciate doubt. God the call. Bless. Happy Thanksgiving, God bless man. you as well. No doubt. That's it for today's version of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Appreciate y'all joining me my second day in my new digs, just figuring stuff out even more and more and more. The camera angles, the desk, the couch, the screens, and all of that stuff, and the interviews and everything else that's going to come through. I'm going to have a lot of stuff going on in the days, the weeks, and the months to come. God willing, I am not going anywhere. And I hope that you will not either. Stick around, because there's more to come anytime you're watching the Stephen A. Smith Show. We elevate, okay? We don't stay stagnant. That's one of the models, one of my many models. So remember that and hold on to it. Until next time, y'all, this is me signing off. Peace and love.